Hey, what's up fam? Thank y'all for tuning in once again. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bells. So every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. So let's get into this story. Uh, let me start like this. I have a cousin, I think I mentioned this in a video before, who put a post on social media and was talking about how he has family that are like just kind of fighting over land that his family owns. And this is a cousin from like our aunt's husband, their side of the family. So it's, I have, so it's no relation to me dealing with that. But he said they had like hundreds of thousands of acres or what have you. And the problem is that you got family from like all over the country that they're trying to figure out, I guess, what to do with the land. Uh, trying to keep the land in the family, people paying taxes, some not paying taxes, whatever the case, you know, whatever it is. And they're going to like a little battle right now. And I told him, and I'm gonna tell you guys too, real quick, there are two videos that you need to watch. They're on Vice TV. One of them is called, How Property Laws are Used to Appropriate, How Property, property Law is used to appropriate black land. And black families in Memphis are fighting to save their land from the pipeline. Now that first video, I saw that, and I told my cousin, send the links to man, watch, I'm gonna leave the links to these videos in the description. And I told him, man, y'all need to watch that. <clears throat> because the problem is, what you're dealing with is like air property. And it's basically property that it's passed down from like great grandparents who were maybe like former slaves or children of slaves. And they pass the property down to their kids, right? And when you look at it, like in the, in the beginning, let's say they may have like a few hundred acres. And so they're like, well, I got a few hundred acres. I got half a dozen, dozen kids. They can have this land and live off of it for the rest of their lives, which is true if the heirs chose to do that. Cause they could pop, they could actually, like I say, live off of that. Each heir could have, you know, dozens of acres on their own and live, live on the land. Then they have kids and their kids live off the land, so on and so forth. Then, you know, whatever they want, you know, and live for generations, for hundreds of years. The problem is you have your family most of the time are gonna move away from the country and move to the big city or move to a whole another state. And then they'll have kids who do the same thing and then they'll have kids who do the same thing. So when you get three, four, five generations down the line, there are hundreds of people in your family, dozens at least, in your family that own, that, can, that try to claim stake in some land. Now, what happens is a lot of times these family members don't know they have the land, don't know how much land they owe, own, and sometimes maybe their financial situation is not in the greatest, you know, in the greatest situation. I mean, greatest, yeah, greatest situation financially. So someone to come up and say, hey, let me buy your part of this land. And it'll give you a few hundred, couple thousand, what have you to, and you just sign over so many acres. Now, mind you, the family does not know what part of the land that they own. They just know there's like 100 acres and it's, it's, it's 100 kids. So they say it's 100. So each one have an acre, but exactly which acre is theirs, you know, they may not know. So he'd be like, hey, just let me have, let me borrow, let me buy one acre. So he'll buy an acre. And so, so a person to buy acres. So now he can pick, if he go down there to the tax office, whatever land deed office, he can go downtown and say the county kind of office and say, hey, I own an acre of this property. I want to sit it right here. I want this acre right here. Since nobody else made a claim or uh, hasn't been properly divided, he can he can get the, the best part of that, the best part of that land. But anyway, I'll get into that. We'll get more deep dive into that more. I won't get too much into that right now. But yeah, I want y'all to watch those two videos. And I also want you to read this article from Texas Monthly. And I'm going to put the description in the box. I'm not going to go through that article because that article is a lengthy read. But hey, black people, you got to read. 
you got to read and learn and get knowledge because this is one reason why a lot of black people don't have anything don't have a whole lot because i'm not saying that we are not educated we are a lot of us are i'm just saying when it comes to certain of us and i'm just talking about my people i don't know what nobody else's race does all i know is that i'm talking to my people we got to read more we got to get back to reading newspapers reading articles online not just watching videos 10 second sound bites 30 second news bites clips stuff like that i've always read like op-eds like the dallas weekly the texas weekly the dallas observer stuff like that because even the dallas morning news newspaper because when you read articles you get all the details when you go to like what i'm about to go to now this finance yahoo.com you get a summary but i'm gonna read this because they do give a good summary, but I'm, I can go, I'm gonna go into a little more detail because I read the Texas Monthly article. So it says how two white men have been seizing black owned land throughout this Texas town. And this is on, let's say, this is Shaniqua Yates. I hope I said her name right. And this is from, like I said, financeyahoo.com. And let's get into it. It said land ownership for black people is already as hard as it is, but this Texas duo would appear to be on a mission to make it harder. According to Texas Monthly, I'm sorry, did I say Texas Weekly? I meant Texas Monthly. According to, I mean, I read Dallas Weekly, Texas Monthly, and uh, Dallas Observer. Okay, according to Texas Monthly, black owned farmland in Brazos County, Texas has been under siege after a real estate owner, Curtis Capps, and his attorney, Bill Youngkin have been on the hunt for acres upon acres of land that have existed within black families since the beginning of time. And what these two are doing is going after air property. And air, H-E-I-R, is like say property that's handed down, you know, from generations on down because due to old laws and misunderstanding of laws and miswriting of laws in the past, this is like the easiest land to get. Because like I said, you, when you have, it's, it's different if, if you only saw like one person, maybe a couple for some land, they, just like, they can pretty much fight and say, hey, no, you're not getting this. Go on about your business, it ain't worth it. But when you have dozens of heirs that can stake a claim to even the smallest piece of land, it's a little easier, especially if they're spread out across the country. It's easier to get that land because you can deal with those that are furthest away from the land because they got no stake in it. They're not doing anything with it. They don't even care about it. Probably know they own it. You see what I'm saying? They find they own it. Say, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take that money. You know, if you want to pay me a few hundred dollars, yeah, I'll take that gone. Whatever. I ain't doing nothing with it. Ain't nobody doing nothing with it. And they don't care. They have no connection to it. So that's what these two have been doing. But let me get into it. They say, how is, how is he doing it? As a time, and, and most of black land is air land because a lot of black people, most black people don't have enough money to Right, get lawyers to write wills to properly document passing down, you know, property, uh, money, pro you know, possessions, what have you. They just say, Hey, we just when we die, it's gonna go down <clears throat> to my kinfolk, which should be enough. But when you're dealing with laws and legal stuff, man, that's why it's important to get a lawyer in the most minute of situations to know a lawyer it's important to send our kids to law school you know we look at these old movies where they say i'm gonna grow up my kid i want my kids to be a lawyer or a doctor or a judge or something like that and we look at it like man that's just cliche everybody ain't gonna do that i want to be a basketball player i want to be a rapper well we need those people cpas we at we need those people in our community. We got to have them. Somebody has to create, raise people that are burst in the law. Financial law, family law, tax law, entertainment law, whatever. We need that. People that's fighting for us because if we don't, we're gonna rely on other people who don't have a connection to us, who feel like they don't owe us anything, who don't really care, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, say, how's he doing? As a tax, as a title examiner, CAPS began operating as a researcher digging into the history and legitimacy of ownership records. 
ultimately using his skill set to pursue courthouse step auctions. So, okay, so this has allowed him to buy real estate seized for unpaid taxes, ultimately flipping the land for profit. He also seeks out heirs' property, which is land passed down to the next generation that doesn't use wills or formal, do or formal documents, like I said, because they don't know black folks just didn't have access to lawyers like that. Now they talk about seizing land for unpaid taxes. I'll tell you this, that's, I'll say is an easy way to get land ownership for anybody, if you're serious about it. In the state of Texas, what you can do is, because I've seen people do it, you can go down to any county courthouse and uh, see and look up any land where they're delinquent on taxes. See how long they've been delinquent. Then, uh, then you want, if you want to, you go down and you, you know, look at the land, survey, it, see if there's any infrastructure. You know, like when I mean that by you know pipes, electricity, water, gas, anything running on the ground. And you can stake a claim to it. You can pay the back taxes on it, and it's technically yours, but for two years. So what you do is you can pay the taxes on it. And I think what the county does is like send letters to the, the original land owners and let them know like, hey, such and such has paid the taxes on land, they're claiming the land, you have a certain amount of time to pay the back taxes. If you, have, you don't pay the back tax within the next two years, the land will belong to the person that just paid the back tax. When it's it's a win-win for the person who does it because one, if you want the land, you get the land, and they don't pay the taxes, it's yours, you know. So, but you just gotta maintain the taxes, right? But if they come back, but if the original landowner comes back and pays the taxes, you get your money back plus I think twenty-five percent. So either way, you're gonna come out ahead. You're gonna come out with something that's gonna benefit. So that's how the law, that's how it is down here in Texas. So that's what one of the things he does, like I say, courthouse steps. That means, they, I think, I don't know, I think some counties do it. They'll go out of the courthouse and, and uh, matter of fact, I know they do. And they have like an auction, like on every Monday or Tuesday morning, every, I don't know, a you know, couple times a month. And they'll just auction off land, you know, and you know, you, you auction off, say, hey, just, they just auction off land. So that's how, He's able to get this. Pro no, that's probably how he gave, able to get this, this property. It says uh, in recent years, Cap set his site upon an area referred to as the Petersburg Settlement, a rural acreage that began to attract attention when Twin Cities, Bryan, and College Station started to see rapid growth around Texas and AM University. And I'm surprised it took so long, but yeah, I knew Cap from Bryan and College Station and down there by Colleen, where the uh, big army base is down there. I guess I'm surprised it ain't grew, but it's country, it's Texas, man. You know, shoot, we ain't trying to grow that fast. They say, per the outlet, nearly 20 years ago, land values began to skyrocket, ultimately making it hard for people like Lawrence Smith, who has not only grown up on the land, but had tended to the area, known as Ann Hackney Track for decades, using pastures to raise cattle and hogs, much like his father did before him. He had inherited the property through his family. Now this Ann Hackney Track started out as slave owner's land. And what he did is he had like two, three hundred, something like acres, I think. And he gave it to the kids of a slave that he was making babies through. That's just in a nutshell. So that's how, and I think her name was Ann Hackney. He said that what's more, Lawrence has done his due diligence pay pro to pay property tax on his 36 acres for a year, which is why he was confused to learn that Caps and Youngkin had brought forth a lawsuit to acquire the land from 16 heirs, but Lawrence's name was nowhere to be found on the list. After working alongside his nephew, Brad Smith, to try to get to the bottom of legal action surrounding the land that had always been the family, it was discovered that Hackney and her heirs, including Smith, never owned as much as of the Petersburg settlement as they thought they did due to faulty deeds. He said, as a result of this, Lawrence's portion of the, of the land was even smaller than he had thought. Caps offered $3,000 to purchase Lawrence's share and was willing to throw in an extra 10 if he could persuade the other heirs to sell him the share. Now, see this Caps and this, and this uh, Youngkin guy. One of them, actually, one of them was a real estate person, one of them was a lawyer. 
That's what I'm saying. Like you got, this is like I said, you gotta know somebody who knows the law and you have to do your research and read and study because this guy in the Texas monthly article, it says that this guy caps is well versed in titles and deeds, studied it, researched it to the broke it down to the, to the smallest compound. This dude went back to laws from 1886. Said 150 something years ago. Started there and worked, you know what I'm saying, and dug that deep to find ways to where he could acquire people, acquire people's land for little to nothing, if need be. The article said that he is at the tax office on a regular basis, bringing the female workers donuts for breakfast in the morning that he's down there. Said he doesn't have a computer. Says everything he does is analog. He goes down there with pen and paper and do research. Man, I went to a county records office. No, no, I went to, yeah, I went to a county's office a couple of months back, getting a passport. And I needed my birth certificate. And the one I had was like the one from the hospital. So it wasn't like legit. So the, the uh, Passport guy at the, at the post office say, hey, go down to the court, go down to the court, uh, tax office, get you a passport, you know, real quick. Won't take but a few minutes, a few dollars, and you, you know, and come on back and get this passport. Okay. So I go down there, right? And you walk in and you see tons, hundreds of, of deed books going back to the 1800s sitting on shelves right there in your face. You can just pull them out, open them up, read, and go from there. And I mean, it's like, it's a big room. We talk about it like a library room, full of, full of, full of, full of uh, deeds for the kind I live in. Cause you used to imagine, well, and, I was, and I was amazed. I was like, God, am I looking at all these deeds, all these people, no, people own this land, this and the third, man. So if you ever want to know if you own property, all you gotta do is do the research, get your family tree. Like I said, I got a family tree. I mean, I know I can trace my Bruce back to uh, on both sides. I think at least three, four, five generations on both sides. All you do is start with names, and then you can go look at land records, deed records, and just go and work your way backwards. And you can see if you own land, if your family has land and stuff that you can stake a claim on. I mean, as simple as that. See if it was taken away from lawfully or unlawfully. But anyway, the point is, like I say, he has no computer, no smartphone, stuff like that, because like he probably understands stuff like that, which is what we're on right now, which I said, hell, I want to get to the point where I'm like Jerry Jones, I only have a flip phone. Everybody that works for me, they can use that this technology, but I just want to like have a flip phone and you won't see me online because people like that are worth millions and billions of dollars and continue to make money while we play with the toys that they sell us, right? So what did it say? Um, it say, it's, oh man, what's more alarms to do than pay taxes alone? Let's do launch door and be found. So, for cast, he was, okay. So as a result of this large portion of the land was even smaller than he thought, kept off 3,000 church. It said per caps, he was quote, going to get it all eventually anyway. What's funny in that article too, at the end of it, it said Lawrence met Caps at the HEB, greatest grocery store of all time, down there in the hometown. And they gave a nod, but then, you know, it kept going. But then Lawrence turned around and said, hey, how am I supposed to get to my land? It's a long story, but somehow Caps got all this land and Lawrence is part like in the middle. But uh, Caps is supposed to be able, supposed to create a roadway or make sure everybody who has land inside of his big track they gotta have access to their land, right? So he stops Caps and asks him, like, hey, how am I supposed to oh so I get the 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 road has a has a gate with a lock on it. So it's like they can't get to it. But it's still illegal, you know. You know, going through legal battle. So he say he saw Caps and said, Hey, how am I supposed to get to my land? He said, What land is that? He said, I don't land on that on this end, what is it, uh, on this track. And he said, oh, he said, oh, he said, oh, well, I own all that. So, like I said, you read the story, man, is it's, it's, 
you got lows, highs, stuff to make you angry, stuff to make you happy, because some of these black folks end up getting a good lawyer and suing caps and actually getting some of the land back because the way he got it was unscrupulous, right? You say at the time that amount was peanuts to Lawrence, who knew that the land was worth much more due to due to the new subdivisions popping up where his family's 36 acres just sat sat just southeast of College Station. Some of the homes popping up were worth millions, and real estate agents were also setting sights on Mill Millican, the old railroad town where Lawrence was born. In that area, some pieces of the land were going for 5,000 acres. In some instances, they were paying double that amount, which would have put his family's land value at roughly $360,000. Large difference from what, from what Caps was offering. It says, quote, I want to get enough for it that all of us heirs in there can go down and buy a pickup truck without being broke, Lawrence said. He said, without enough money to pay for legal representation, Due to a previous lawsuit brought forth by a cousin claiming that they, that they too owned a portion of Lawrence's land, he found himself back at in the courtroom with a new lawsuit from Caps. Now, he said, just as the judge had ruled in favor of his cousin before, Lawrence also lost to Caps, and it was determined that he and his fellow heirs only owned 3.6 acres of the 36 acres that he had paid property tax on and tended to for decades. So, this is the thing about the paper trail. When you don't really know what you're doing, don't really understand, you really don't research what you're getting into, nobody's gonna be there to help you. Nobody's gonna bail you out. Nobody's gonna say, hey, uh, you're paying taxes on so much land, but you really don't owe 3.6. All they're gonna do, they're gonna take, they're kinda gonna take that money and just put it in their account and keep it moving. They'll research it later. Oh, it seems like a discrepancy. Oh, they giving us money? Oh, we'll research it later. But let it be a discrepancy to the world. They owe you money. Are you trying to get money back? You know, oh man, oh, oh, oh you know, uh, oh, let's say you don't pay the money. Oh, they're gonna be, they're gonna be on your doorstep. They're gonna really, you know, try to make sure everything is straight. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying though. But uh, so let's say that there's more to the story surrounding Lawrence and the other areas of the Anna Hackney track. Caps and Young can allegedly continue to take advantage of black owners land black on black landowners in the area for years before heirs property reform was passed through state legislation by senator royce west and slowed down their taxes shout out to royce west he's from dallas he's a senator lawyer trying to help the because he's trying to help all these you know saying uh black families because he knows that most of the land heirs land is black folks land because again like i say no access no money to hire a good lawyer to help you keep the, keep keep land in your family without being taken you know taken advantage of by people like cash now here's the thing about that lawsuit from his cousin again texas monthly says cousin sued because caps went to the cousin and the cousin lives in a whole different state caps reached out to them and said hey you own some of this property I want to buy it from you. But the problem is, and the person didn't even know they own part of the land. Or didn't, you know, didn't have, you know, right, you no, know, right, you no know, rights to ownership of that land. You uh he uh reached out to them, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, whisper sweet nothings in their ear, and that cousin ended up suing Lawrence, saying, Hey, I own part of this land, I want what I what I deserve. He won because, truthfully, he did own it. And then once he got that land, he somehow gave it to Caps, and so now Caps is, you know, part owner. And it's just, it just kept snowballing. Much like Lawrence and other black areas in the Brazos County, there are people across the nation who, who are targeted with similar tactics. A 2020 study revealed that the amount of land owned by black people in the 17 states that are home to most of the counties, country's black-owned farms dropped by two-thirds between 1917 and 1997. Now, I said this before. We're talking about we don't have land, black folks don't have nothing, yada, yada, yada. A lot of times we have something, we just don't know what to, how to, how to, what to do with it. Like I said before, I know at least four people that I've probably met in the past five years who family has land, but this is in the South. See what I'm saying? So in the South, black folks, you still got black people who got land down here, whose land have been passed down and still got family living on that land. So 
it's not that we don't have it and we it's just that we have it and don't know it like this article said you got people in other parts of the country who actually have you know who actually are property owners down here but don't know it uh, it's just a good reason for me i would say for us to you know get black folks to move back south do your research see if you own land and move on back south man where your people's at because this is where the land is fertile land great land you can you know raise a family grow crops raise cattle it's down here y'all i mean it ain't I mean, we you know we run across the country because you know running from slavery and racism but hell racism is everywhere truth be told and then truth be told everybody was cool with racism i mean with, with slavery until it started hurting their pockets or started you know uh about to break up the union so it's all over the place but there's a reason why slavery was down here in the south because of the because of the soil think about it because of the land like seriously you couldn't do it way in the west coast couldn't do it up north where it's cold you know oh uh, yeah can't west coast hurricanes hot stuff like that you know in the desert couldn't do it you had to be like texas and on east you feel me because this is where the best soil is yeah you can grow tropical plants and fruits in florida like south florida you see what i'm saying you can grow cotton sugar cane tobacco Louisiana, Texas, uh, the coastal states, you no know, south of the southeast coastal states. So, come on, y'all, you got to look. I mean, look at what you're missing out on. They say today the property will be worth an estimated three hundred twenty-six billion dollars. However, it is unknown how much of the land was sold willingly or at grossly undervalued prices. Some of the ownership would have also been lost involuntarily. Of course. It's such a problem that we can't identify the scope of it, said Andrea Roberts, a professor at the University of Virginia and director of the Texas Freedom Freedom Colonies Project. Who owns the Ann Hackney Tract today? Years later, Lawrence is still fighting to regain ownership of the land that has been his family for generations. I'm trying to get the story out there big enough to where some rich person up the ladder is going to see it and do something about this. Rich people ain't gonna do nothing about you. Should they rich? They ain't, trying to, they, ain't, they ain't trying to help us get rich, so what are you talking about? Sally Cap still own roughly all the land in the Petersburg settlement known as the Ann Hackney Track. And that's pretty much it on this one. Let's say, uh, let me see, read this. Say Sophie Levin Rose had a cult comment. So the article says this has allowed him to buy real estate seized for unpaid taxes, ultimately flipping the land for profit. He also seeks out heirs' property, which is land passed down to the next generation that doesn't use wills or formal documents. This is not just happening in this area or in Texas, but all across the U.S. that is experiencing rapid growth. Way too many people are living in homes or land they do not own. You are relatively safe if you purchase it recently after a title search and use a title company to confirm your clear ownership before you bought it. But if you just took over the property based on a will and never changed the title to the land, you could be in big trouble. True. Air property is used to escape paying inheritance tax. It is illegal as it is tax evasion. As long as you actually have the will documentation show it belongs to you, it should be fine. And yeah, see, that's the thing. Like I said, a lot of us didn't have access to that. If you report it and pay the required taxes, yeah, a lot of us didn't have access, like say, to lawyers and understand how that worked because we got screwed over a lot. You know, over the, I mean, just 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 be honest. Over the, up since the beginning of time, since we got out of slavery and had a bunch of land, have hundreds and thousands of acres, we've been screwed over. People have came and taken people, taken our land without us even knowing it. I mean, just doing some. I mean, doing some unscrupulous stuff. And again, you need to read this Texas Monthly article. I'm going, like I say, put it in the description box, y'all. Get to it. Read, you know what I'm saying? Watch, read it, and understand, especially if you have land or if you plan to have land. Land ownership is the beginning of wealth, period. You can't deny it. You can't escape it. If you 
don't have land. I mean, you see how, let me say how, how can I put this? There are a lot of white people who go to college and don't have to pay much for college. And you can say, well, their family got a lot of money. Their family got land. Well, where the hell you think they got it from? Oh, you remember I said that I went down to the county office to get my passport, right? What well, was this other young white girl who was there doing the same thing? Funny thing, I told the story too. Funny thing, she was actually getting a passport, I mean, getting a, uh, I think she was trying to get a passport and she was going to get a birth certificate because her too, she too, had the exact same, probably the same uh, birth certificate I had from the hospital because she said she was born in the same hospital I was born in. And uh, so she, she was talking about and she was taking care of her grandmother and she was looking, you know, to um, go on a trip or something. You know, kind of scared to leave her grandmother at home because, you know, she's taking care of her, but she said she just needed some, she, but she got somebody to, who just agreed to watch her while she go on this trip. Okay. She also mentioned that her family had like 600 acres down the road that they bought like in 83. I'm like, damn, seriously? But she doesn't look like she had no money, much money at all, but it doesn't matter. She's sitting on these acreage, taking care of her grandmother, ain't got no, ain't got no house, no. Land bought 50, 40 years ago. So which means she, she can, all I gotta do is pay taxes on it. And the people who bought it are still alive, so they, you know, so she got, so they got it made. Here's, here's what you gotta, here's what I want y'all to understand. You get some land, let's say you go back, go down get some land, pay the taxes on it. Wait a couple of years out, they don't pay the taxes, it's yours, clear and free. Now it's yours. Get your little house, double wide, tiny home, whatever, especially if you already got infrastructure. Always, that's one main thing, you wanna make sure you got, you know, infrastructure underground because it'll make it easier and it costs less money and less headache to if you want to put a house down there and be your small house I mean get you a little house and pay on it pay off pay it off in a few years now you got your own land it's yeah it's gonna be away from Dallas and it's gonna be away from all the 10 Fort Worth Houston New York whatever I don't know how much land is up north what's gonna be away from the major cities but you'll have this land that is paid off. Get kids, and y'all get on, and you get you have children, right? Raise your family on this. When you don't have, let's just say this. My dad told me this the other day. People don't realize your biggest, your biggest bill is going to be your house and your car note. If you can eliminate. Let's see, housing, car note, and food. If you can eliminate your house bill, pay your car off, pay your car, car off, and all you really gotta do is buy food from your house, for your house, you living like a fat rat. Like seriously, you ain't gotta work these two, three jobs, full-time jobs overnight, doing doubles on the weekend, stuff like that, trying to get this overtime, which is gonna be taxed anyway. You gotta sit there and kill yourself for this money. That's gonna get you nowhere but broken down, sick, in the hospital, getting knee and hip replacements every year. You know what I'm saying? Blood sugar, sky high, high blood pressure, taking these medications. I'm doing it for what? Just so it can kill you earlier so somebody else is just, 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 just move right into your spot. But if you don't have those major bills, because they try to say what, ah, your rent, you need to be just 130 your rent. Well, let's just be honest. They ain't, that ain't, that's what they want. That's what they say, but that ain't how it really go. But if you can eliminate like rent, mortgage, pay your car off. Don't pay your car off and say, oh, I'm gonna go buy me a new one now and pay it off. Hell no, sit on that for a while. You know what I'm saying? Drive that sun gun until the wheels fall off. Like seriously, you gonna rent a car, lease a car, I mean, and look at that, but still, that's, if you don't need to, don't do it. Just keep your car running, looking nice, clean. Keep the car for 50 years if you want to. But if you can eliminate your rent and your mortgage. Like seriously, that's probably half of your bills. Easily. And you eliminate your car, which right now they say is like an average of $700 a month. That's another third 
or one fourth of your bill. Easy. So you can save at least 50 to 75% of the money that you make, save it and use it to invest, use it to put the kids through college, you know, use it to put into like 401ks, IRAs, mutual funds, invest in a business. Like I say, put your kids through college, go on vacation, go on trips. If you can do that, man, you, you straight. I mean, you, that's, that's the true to me, quote unquote, American dream. But that's a true dream right there. And, and the best way, the quickest way to do that is land ownership. There's a lot of us out there who live and still living in mama's and grandmama's house, but ain't taking care of it, ain't keeping it up. But then you got people in your community that, you got people in your community that ain't paying grandma taxes or who gonna sell a house because they want to move somewhere else. Ain't helping to keep the neighborhood up so it's like being crime riddled. But it's funny how them white folks can come in and knock all that crime out. You and there, the crime going up, drugs, you know, theft, gangs, all this kind of stuff. But them white folks come in, knock your house down, rebuild it, and they just do it slowly but surely. It's funny, they'll get that crime out of there real quick. But you the one living in these houses that are paid off, but instead of saying, hey, I'm just going, you know, hey, let me stay here, let me get a job, go to work, I can go to school because I ain't got to pay this mortgage. House is paid off. You know what I'm saying? I got an old Lincoln, you know, got an old Lincoln town car that's paid off with my, with, with my 415s in the trunk, still sitting on donks for whatever reason. Hey, it's already it's paid off. I could you know, drive this car for, for a while, go to school, earn me a trade <clears throat> or get a degree and then make good money, but still living in this house that is paid off. And like I say, fix it up, rebuild it, do whatever. But once it's done, it's done. And like I said, I'm doing is paying taxes. That's how your generational wealth for the average black American is going to happen. Period. There's no secret. There's no quick rich, get rich quick scheme. <laughs> And all this other crap that they be selling online, that our own people be selling us online, trying to say that they're gonna show us how to make a million dollars in 10 minutes. It don't work that way. Because if it did, we all be doing it. But anyway, y'all, that's all I got for this story. Again, watch the two videos, take your butt somewhere, sit down, care if it's on the toilet, in your bed, outside, on the porch, on your lunch break. Read this dang on Texas Monthly article and get some knowledge man make your uh do right by your family do right by your kids do right by yourself because you got people out there who are out to take who are out to take like like i said this guy named caps this cat is devious man you got like i said you got to read you can see exactly how devious he is and the stuff that he's been through but again he read and he's studied and he know these laws and these titles and deeds like the back of his hand. Why did they say that? Because I don't know much. I mean, I see my back of my hand, but it ain't like I know the back of my hand. Like I don't know every crack in there and all the hair, I can't count all the hairs and in the scars on my hand. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? He knows that. Like he probably know, I don't know. Like he probably know the, I don't know, the, 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 the KKK national anthem. I don't know, but anyway, get your research done, y'all. Hey, Tell me what you think about the story. Leave your comments below and then share it with the world. With that being said, I leave you in peace. And I'll see you on the other side.